All right, welcome back everyone to the FM TV studio here at MWC Barcelona 25. We're very excited to be here despite the weather. I was told it was going to be sunny. It's not, so I'm going to wear my sunglasses just despite during the entire show. All right, let's get on to the topic at hand. We're talking about MTN, the non-terrestrial networks, and the role that they're going to play in connecting everyone. A lot of misconceptions, a lot of ideas out there that are, might be a bit out of date, and I'm very excited to welcome our guests to talk about it. Let's start, Serge, uh, mm. with, with your point of view mm. around what gap do these uh, MTNs serve? What, what's their purpose and where are they being deployed? Yeah, very good question. NTN, uh, from our perspective as a satellite network operator, is all about addressing coverage gaps. You know, we provide service to extend the actual uh, wireless operator's network filling all the gaps that uh, would not normally be filled uh, with uh, terrestrial infrastructure. Excellent. And let's talk about, from Mavenir's perspective, of course, this is going to take a technical effort, right? Bringing in the right technology, the right capacity and capabilities. Can you maybe tell us about where we are with that and, and what are some of those capabilities that are evolving as we look at it from a technology perspective? Absolutely. So when we talk about the overall non-terrestrial network, we talk about satellite, ground station, and the RAN and core solution. Where Mavenir comes into the picture is where we do the RAN and core solution for the NB-IoT and NRNTN solutions. As of now, we are working on NB-IoT NTN. We are also developing in, uh, NRNTN on top of it. And another breakthrough that we have done recently is voice over NB-IoT, where we did the first demo with Terrastar collaboration with some of the you know, chipset vendors, and we were able to make the first voice over NB voice call capable, possible. Brilliant. And, and Luke, I know that mm. you have a very good story to tell about the ecosystem. I also want to put you on the hot spot and talk about Starlink, because you're the one that can tell us about you know, what role they play. But I think also that device ecosystem and, and how that's evolving. Sure, yeah. There are, there are two approaches uh, to NTN in the market currently uh, alongside each other. We have the, the 3GPP standardization approach that the likes of Mavenir and Terrastar are, are driving forward uh, using dedicated L and S-Pan spectrum to provide uh, 3GPP services. Um, it does need uh, devices available to support those, uh, those spectrum and that technology, uh, which is growing. You know, we do see a, a growing number of devices supporting that spectrum now. We have some from uh, Apple, of course, and the Samsung ecosystem as well, uh, developing uh, there as well. On the flip side, to your question on Starlink, um, you know, we see an approach from SpaceX Starlink and AST Space Mobile and a company called Link as well, um, sharing operator spectrum um, to provide similar levels uh, of services. So we see a demo uh, currently active in the market uh, with T-Mobile and Starlink providing uh, services there. But of course, um, you know, there are challenges there with regulation and with spectrum interference as well. So yeah, two, two quite different approaches, but uh, achieving uh, pretty similar aims. Excellent. Well, let's close out by thinking one year ahead. Of course, every year we come together in Barcelona for better or worse. What would you like to be the story of NTN in 2026? What would be a, a successful year ahead for the, the technology? Let's, let's start with you, sir. Um, you know, we see a very fast-paced development in, uh, in the NTN area uh, right now. Uh, we foresee, uh, you know, access more and more devices uh, the, uh, uh, that are NTN capable. The infrastructure will evolve very quickly, going from narrowband IoT to full-fledged uh, channel. So we're going to see a lot of things developing over the next two, three years. Uh, it's going to be interesting to follow. Excellent. Suman, do you have any uh, thoughts on that as well, the year ahead? So if you ask me, <clears throat> if you look at the overall population on Earth, there's like 7% of the population that is not being covered by any terrestrial network at this given point of time. That's almost like half billion people out there. So with NB-IoT as the starting point, are we solving some basic necessity problems for those customers? So that's the potential of NTN by curving those individuals. And whether economics is going to make sense comes based on willingness to pay, where those customers are going to have that willingness to pay for this basic IoT, IoT on smartphones, and what that dollar amount is going to be. It's something that has to be figured out, but then we have a problem that needs to be solved, and NTN is a solution for that. Oh, brilliant. Okay. And, and closing out with Luke here, global view, what mm. do you think the year ahead holds for NTN? 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of activity has been in North America, in the US and Canada, where there is a you know, real need um, for these solutions. But I think looking to other markets and other regions around the world, places like Europe, but also Asia, Latin America, Africa, the Middle East, actually there are you know, large regions and big countries that, that need access to these kind of technologies. Um, so seeing that kind of develop in those uh, areas uh, will be uh, you know, exciting for, for the few years ahead, I think. Excellent. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us here at FNTV, sure. and I look forward to catching up next year on how we're doing. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.